Guys, welcome back to A Cow's Opinion. Not a really happy one that I didn't want to make today, and it is kind of late, but this is news that I really didn't want to talk about, but we're going to talk about. It is proof that the games industry layoffs still suck. Aftermath, Nathan, Nathan Grayson over here let us know today, unfortunately, that Humble Games laid off all employees and carries on in name only. Now, if it sounds kind of familiar, they are part of the same company that does the Humble Indie Bundle. You know, those guys that raise money for charities, a bunch of indie games will be in there. You pay a really cheap price. Well, today, the publisher of indie hits like Signalis, Wizard of Legend, and Temtem informed the employees of layoffs and affected the whole company, laying off all 36. They started going to LinkedIn to let everyone know what they said. Steve Horowitz, excuse me, president of the parent company Ziff Davis's technology and shopping division, said that there were long delays and rising costs as pervasive issues by Humble Games, and that they attempted to sell the company twice, but neither time they could get significant demand and could not get to a viable offer or an outcome. As a result, he was letting everyone go, and the remaining projects will be carried over the finish line by a third-party company called The Powell Group. We continue to see cost rise, delays continue, and the, during the sale process or attempt to sell over the past couple of months, we've seen an additional millions increase in development expenses, coupled with even longer delays in bringing titles to market. Given all this, we've made a tough but necessary decision to restructure all of Humble Games with the goal of providing the best, cost-effective way to make sure that the games see the market, our existing slate sees market, and supporting the developers that are associated with it. As such, we're going to be using a third party to help us manage the slate moving forward, as well as the back catalog. As a result, all roles within Humble Games are going to be impacted. In other words, it costs too much money, and they decide to just third party it all out. A spokesperson will later said that this is a restructuring, not a closure. Humble Games is there, but it's a name only. It's they're the name on the box of the video game or on the website for the video game. But this power group is going to be the one doing all the work now because they formed it out to them. How that makes costs better, I don't know. Maybe the power group just low bid them. I'm not familiar with the power group, so you can comment down below if you know who the heck these guys are. But yeah, what remains will be humble games in name only. The former employees are not happy. Ziff is trying to spread the idea that it's a restructuring to save face, but that's a lie, said one employee, granted an, an amenity to avoid, vo to avoid potentially voiding the severance agreement. No one from HG survived the layoffs, nor will they have anything to do with game launches moving forward. Also, former Humble Games creative lead Chris Radley, who left at the end of 22, spread it, said it even more clearly. Operations have been handed off to a third-party consultancy. No staff are left. Do not believe this tailored message written by the parent company of Humble Games, Ziff Davis, who are trying to mitigate pushback. This was once again a failure of leadership across the board, and once again hard-working, talented staff are paying the cost for their poor decisions. Every ex-employee is being gaslit by this narrative, and it's so disrespectful. Now again, Humble Games was the publisher spun off from the Humble Bundle, which is the charity-centric storefront that was acquired by IGN in 2017 and uh, is not impacted. IGN has also recently purchased the Gamer Network, which is Eurogamer, Rock Paper Shotgun, GameIndustry.biz, and VG247 for an undisclosed sum, which is leading to immediate layoffs and the gutting of popular beloved board game site Dicebreaker, which really sucks if you like board games. Now, a bunch of Humble Game employees are saying this. The business models were just incompatible with each other. Ziff is very good at owning a lot of media and increasing revenue in advertising, and Humble Games Publishing was just not something that agreed with their business model. They needed money. They needed it now. They wanted to see an immediate increase in revenue after investing cash into a business, and unfortunately, 
That's not how games work. We also have another former employee saying, Ziff Davis does not understand the world of game development and the principle that when you invest money, a game is not released in six months, but takes time to be done. And we're starting to not like this when they understood it's working, so with their stock going down, they simply decided they did not want to be in that business anymore. Their decision was not rational and will really hurt indie development in the long run, on top of their employees and the project in development. Now, former employees were shocked by this, with some even thinking that it was going to be a sale. Remember, they said they tried to sell it twice, but they just couldn't. But there were signs of trouble, because Humble Games had no projects for 2026 or 2027, which is a pretty big gap when you need to plan out your development releases years in advance. I know that to you and me, that's like two, three years. I don't know what I'm going to be doing in two or three years, you probably don't, but in the world of uh, publishing video games, you want to have a couple of games coming out, you know, on a regular basis. We were very chari charity oriented. Humble Bundle itself raised a quarter of a billion dollars for charity, and I know a portion of that was due to Humble Games, said an former employee. We looked for people who didn't just want to be in games, who didn't just want to be in some random indie games publisher but people that very much exemplified these values. Everyone cared for each other, taking on work of their colleagues to help when needed, always taking into consideration what could hurt or impact their colleagues, and trying to ease it before it even happened. And this was reflected back to the way we worked with the indie devs, providing honest feedback without imposing creative changes. There are certain people now that force creative changes and make games worse because they're idiots. Respecting and trusting in their game visions, not going by the letter of the contract when it came to milestones, as everyone knows how game develop devs work and how sometimes things take a bit longer before coming good. This was truly a unique publisher with an amazing cast of people, and I am not sure that a similar publishing structure exists. So, yeah, we have only five comments. Well, it's I have uploaded this in a long time ago. I'm not canceling my bid for President of the United States. I'm just taking a little break and it exhumes a tragic loss. So, yeah, basically, here's the thing, guys. This media company thought, you know what's really hot? Video games. And bought this and then was surprised when they couldn't pump out video. Games take a long time to develop. Indie games can take even longer than huge AAA games. Not necessarily because they have tons of budget and employees and lots of stuff. But because they're very small teams, and it can take, instead of two, three, four years, sometimes it takes three, four, five, six years or longer for an indie game with a small studio or single dev publisher, which is a one-man team, to put them out. And it's unfortunate that this is what happened. It seems to me that the Ziff Davis group thought that they could buy them and instantly get cash flow, but didn't understand that you have to put in a lot of money and then it comes out over time. Years later, it's an investment. It's not a money printer. And they were looking for a money printer. And now we have apparently lost a pretty cool Humble Games developer. Apparently, this group called the Powell Group is going to be finishing all the remaining projects that have been signed up. It's only going to be a couple of years because, as the article stated, there was nobody in 2026 or 2027 that had signed up with Humble Games yet. So this year and next year, really. And then I wouldn't be surprised if Humble Games just closed its doors. I don't know how you're saving money uh, farming it out to a third-party consultancy group. I'm not huge into, you know, business contracts. I don't know. But this sucks. And this is just more of our continuing coverage on how game layoffs and greedy publishers... The the displacer group the that, you know, was counting on two billion dollar investment from Saudi Arabia. Em, not displacer, excuse me. Embracer. Embracer. E M B R A C E R. We've talked about how that that was the biggest blow up of them all. There's been lots of layoffs, but that was the biggest one of all because they were like, Well, we just need we're going to acquire all these publishers and all these developers and all these IPs. And then the final piece of the puzzle was a $2 billion investment from Saudi Arabia to fund all these IPs and developers and publishers that they acquired. But the problem is they saved getting the money for last, and then that deal fell through. And then Embracer had all of these studios, and 
not the money to run them and to fund the projects and to make the game. Probably a $2 billion investment into those IPs would have yielded multiple times more as long as you let them make great games. I was not worried about the quality of the talent in the studios. What crushed it was they didn't have the money to pay for these studios for the next one to four years as they're making the games. Game development is very upfront heavy. You pay all the money before you get to sell a single copy, and then you sell the copies, and it can take months or years to break even depending on how the game sells and its business model and its you know money-making model. And that sucks. That's kind of the reason why when we saw the Saints Row remake and then it bombed because unlike Humble Games, you know, there was a bunch of people who said, hey, you have to put this in. You need to do this. This is really popular on Twitter. Do this. And we had, you know, look, I'm not trying to say you can't do a game with a cast like that, but it was a cast that just, you know, kind of hung out together, looked like the non-threatening cast of a CW show. Uh, acted like they were in it for you. We were in it because of college debt. Capitalism's bad. And then you had missions where you were just killing 50 people to get a Happy Meal toy. And the story didn't make any sense. But worst of all, all of that can be forgiven if the game is fun. The game was not fun. It was massively buggy. And then they shut down the studio. Because the people at the top didn't understand. They're like, here's your quotas. You gotta hit this. You gotta hit this. You gotta get it. It's not a... A amount of money plus B amount of time equals C awesome game. Sometimes, it, like this article suggested, takes a while to find the fun to iron out all the bugs. And as these media companies and these hedge funds and all these other guys continue to not understand that, you're going to see a lot more closures this year, unfortunately. It's already July. I, I'm too depressed and tired right now to even go look up how many people... No, I'm not. Hang on a second. So, yeah, I... I, I, f I feel like I should just end with this, guys. But beginning last year and continuing to this year, right now we have over 10,000 jobs lost last year. An additional 10,800 lost from January to June of this year. It's almost the end of July. We're not even, I'm sure we're up to almost 12,000, if not more, by now. Why are game studios closing? Uh, that's just, uh, you know, that was not, never mind. It doesn't matter. Look, we've gone over it. Greed, uh, overinvestment, selling IPs, publishers and developers at the top of the market during COVID. And then, of course, game, it's not, games are still growing. They're just not facing the explosive, huge growth that they were when we all had to be stuck inside. We can all go outside, touch some grass, high five each other, do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. It's what we like to do. But this is, this sucks, and I know that this isn't the fun kind of article. I've been looking for more and more fun articles, but these are important to understand that if you like a developer and you find an indie game, there's a reason why last Sunday, even though it made me look stupid on how bad I was on it, I was playing the demo for Creek's Front Tactics because it's an awesome indie developer. They deserve to be seen, and I want to support more indie developers that are making more awesome games we don't get anymore. So that's what I suggest you, you guys do. You can tweet, retweet, eat, make videos, do whatever you want. But if you know of a smaller developer or publisher and you love the stuff that they make, feel free to support them because if we don't, this is what's going to happen. And unfortunately, when people at the top get greedy or even think that they're selling to people who are going to take care of their IP and their staffs, and then they don't see instant massive piles of money, we're going to lose a lot more talent, guys. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry that this game ain't not this game. This game's industry situation is so freaking depressing and sorrowful right now i don't have anything positive to say but you know what you can do that will help you can play more games because games are awesome these studios don't deserve this you're awesome and you deserve the awesome i'll see you next time